Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, it ceases to amaze, it never ceases to amaze, Mr. President, to hear my colleagues whose first loyalty is to Wall Street banks, who continue to make excuses for being against, against putting a consumer cop on the beat. They talk about budget. Now, this is, this is an office that will be a few hundred million dollar office, this consumer protection, this consumer cop on the beat. But this, he, this consumer cop on the beat has to look at trillions of dollars in mortgages, has to protect consumers when there are $30 billion in overdraft fees alone that banks are charging, when many times those overdraft fees are because consumers simply can't figure out the fine print and don't understand the terms of the agreement. In the end, again, people on this floor, their special interest friends, in the Congress, the, their Wall Street bank, for the friends of the Wall Street banks, the friends of these interest groups that continue to fleece the American people. If we had had Rich Cordray, or Elizabeth Warren for that matter, the consumer cop on the beat, would we have had these kind of foreclosures in places like Cleveland and Dayton? Would we have had these fly-by-night mortgage brokers from AmeriQuest in New Century and others moving in and taking advantage of people? I'm not sure we, should, we would have. But my Republican colleagues, my colleagues who always do the bidding, not all of them, but many of them always do the bidding of these special interest groups that have inflicted far too much damage on this economy. Now, I hear all of this, that we, if we just would make some changes in this agency, why? Well, Mr. President, I talked to the Senate historian, because I've heard these arguments, if we just change this agency, I'd vote for it. Well, first of all, I talked to the Senate historian who said, never in the history of the United States Senate has one political party tried to block the nomination of a presidential appointee based on wanting to change the agency. It's nothing about the qualifications of Rich Cordray. I know Richard Cordray better than anybody in this institution. He's from my state, he was our attorney general, he was the state treasurer, he was um, county treasurer, he was a state legislator. I've known Rich for over 20 years. I know that he's qualified. My colleagues here on both sides say he's qualified, but they say, well, we want to change the agency. Well, the agency, we worked with Republicans to change this agency as it went through the process Dodd-Frank. They keep shifting the, goal, the goalpost. In order to accommodate Republican concerns, we made the CFPB a bureau at the Federal Reserve. Many of us thought it should be, he should be totally independent. We were willing to make that concession in order to get Republican support. They then, after we did that, they asked for regular GAO audits of the books. They got them. And the, the, the GAO said that the CFPB passed with flying colors. Then they said, we don't like Elizabeth Warren, give us somebody else. Elizabeth Warren withdrew. She was a great consumer activist, would have been very good at this. We're replacing her, the president is, with Richard Cordray from Ohio. He will do this job well. Then after he's appointed, they say, well, and he's gotten, Richard Cordray's got support from banks and credit unions and consumer groups. That's still not good enough. Then they said, they asked the president not to recess appoint, to recess appoint a director. We, the president agreed to that. It's still not. They're moving the goalposts. Now they're saying they won't approve anyone to serve as a director of the Consumer, of the consumer Bureau unless we change the Bureau. In other words, to protect their Wall Street friends, they're saying, we're not going to allow a director to be in place unless you weaken this agency. As Senator Reid from Rhode Island said, would we not appoint a director of the Food and Drug Administration in the future until we rolled back all food safety laws? Are we not going to protect a consumer, uh, product, consumer uh, products bureau uh, in the government, in the Department of Commerce, until we roll back child toy safety laws? I mean, that makes no sense. This was voted with more than 60 votes, 61 or 62, if I recall, a supermajority in this Congress. Two years ago, we allowed all kinds of amendments. We, we accepted many changes that Republicans want. But in the end, let's see, it's a choice. Are we for consumers or are we for Wall Street? Well, you know who it is. And all we're asking, Mr. President, we're not asking, I'm not asking my colleagues to vote for him. I'm asking for my colleagues to let us have an up or down vote. Just let us vote on it. Don't filibuster, don't block the vote. Understand that this is a, this is a vote coming up that's a, this to break a filibuster, to break a, a Republican filibuster where Republican senators all, almost always are flacking for Wall Street. And they do that 
it, 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 it ceases to, it just never ceases to amaze, Mr. President. So all we ask is an up or down vote. Vote yes on cloture so we can have an up or down vote and, uh, for, for Attorney General Cordray. Mr. President, I yield the floor and ask for a yes vote.